So now we're ready to work on the um, clasping for our bracelet. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to do this uh, toggle, beaded toggle clasp using right angle weave instead of the traditional method of using peyote. So I'm going to get started. I'm used, I decided I'm going to use some Nymo thread um, size B for the round portion of the um, toggle clasp. And the reason for that is that because if, as you're trying to work your cubic right angle weave around into this circle, if you're using the fire line, it's pretty stiff. Another reason I can get away with the Nymo is because I'm using all seed beads here in the center. I don't have to worry too much about sharp edges cutting my thread. And the inside of, I mean, the, the cubic right angle weave circle uh, basically doesn't get a whole lot of wear and tear. So there's several reasons why you can get away with that um, in this portion of the project. So I've got my first four beads on and I'm passing back through all four beads. And as I come around, I can either tie a knot here or I can just simply move through the first bead again to finish closing the beadwork. So that's what I'm going to do. Is once I get myself worked all the way back up, get my full length on, I'm going to come back through these um, and sew the two ends of my cubic right angle weave strip together. And we've done that in a previous video. But we'll do it again here. So now I'm just going to go ahead and pass into the next bead. To begin our first cube, we I'm just going to show you guys how the, this is the cubic right angle me weave method two that I've done on my videos um, in my on my YouTube channel and a blog post over on the blog. You pick up three beads, you pass back through the first bead you're exiting to build the first wall of your cubic right angle weave cube. Then we're going to move into the next bead on our first original base. Now we already have two shared beads in place for this next wall, so we only need to pick up two. We're going to grab this side bead of that first wall with our needle and plus the bead on the base that we're exiting to form the next wall. Whoops. It's one th I had to wax my thread so it's a little bit sticky. Let me go ahead and pull this in and I'll bring it back around. So now I can come into the next bead on the base. I want to make sure my thread didn't loop around when I dropped my beadwork. So now I'm coming into that third bead on the base. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick up two. I'm going to come down that side bead of the previous wall plus the bead I'm exiting on the base. Pull. And now I'm ready to come into the fourth bead on the base. And as I come into that fourth bead on the base, I'm also going to go up through the side bead on the very first wall I created. And I've shown you guys this um, several times now. Once I do that, I can pull all of these beads. Into position and start forming these walls up into the cube. So now that I've got my little shape pulled up into the cube. I'm exiting from the side bead here on the right. I have to only need to pick up one last bead because we already have three beads in place. And sew down the side bead on the left. And pull that bead in. Now I need to come across the bead here at the bottom. And then up the side bead on the right one more time. You can see my four little beads of my last Juna here. And then once I have done that, I need to sew together the four beads here at the top. So it doesn't matter which direction you go in. 
Just make sure that you sew through all four beads plus one more to finish closing the beadwork. So I'm just taking a little shortcut here and sewing through two at a time. And so now that makes four. So once I pull this thread, then I just need to sew through one more bead. And if you drop your work, just kind of make sure that you're paying attention to where you're still on the top of the beadwork. Like that, which I dropped my work, so I need to be very careful about which bead I sew through next to make sure I'm still working on the top four beads. It is a little fidgety for using these small 11 O's when you first get started on this uh, cubic right angle weave. Once you get a couple of units done, um, things get a lot easier. So let me show you how to add the second unit of this cubic right angle weave and from there it's just repeating the, the exact same steps of what I'm fixed of the of the unit I'm getting ready to show you until you have a total of 14 then as we um, after we have our 14 on we'll come back and we'll add a 15th unit but we'll add it at the same time as we close our beadwork into a circle so let's go ahead and do the second unit and then uh, units 3 through 14 will be exactly like this so now we're exiting this bead at the top. It simply put, these the top beads now become the same as our bottom beads at, at the very beginning where we just you know created our first right angle weave unit. So now we've got, we're passing back through that same bead. Let's see what's going on with my focus. We need to move into the next bead on the base. You can see my little wall right there. You can see I had a little bit of wax. I mean, I had a little bit too much wax on my thread. All right, so now I am ready to pick up two beads. I'm going to come through the side bead of that first wall, plus the bead on the base where my needle is currently exiting. There you can really see that wax right there. Don't worry about trying to pick that wax off. If if it's really noticeable when you finish up your project, you can always just run it under a little uh, warm water and then allow it to dry. So now I'm moving into the next bead on the base. That base of four beads, coming into that third one, picking up two more beads. I'm going to come down the side bead that previous wall plus the bead on the base where I'm currently exiting. And now that is our third wall. We just need to come through the next bead on the base right here. And this time I'll be coming up the, the side bead on the left. All right, so now I'm going to pick up my last bead. I've got three beads in place here. One, two, three. I'm exiting the top of this bead, I pick up the top bead, and I come down the side bead on the other side, over here on the right. Then I need to come back through the bead here on the base. Right there. So up the bead on the left again. Let me tell the little tail there is getting in my way. So up this bead on the left, and then stitch the four beads at the top together. And then just repeat that until you have a total of 14 units. So right now we just finished the second one. So we need to do 12 more, just like that. Remembering to stitch our, five, our four beads together at the top, plus one bead to close the beadwork. So I'm going to keep working until I have my 14 on. I've already got two. I've got 12 more to go. And I'll meet you guys back and we'll show you how to add that last unit and close our cubic right angle weave up into this circle. So now I've got my 14 units created on this strip. I have 
You want to line your strip up so that you make sure that one solid row of units is, you know, laid out straight like this. I've got my working thread exiting this bead. I'm going to connect this bead to this bead. In order to do that, I need a side bead. This will become my top bead. This will be the bottom bead. However, if you fold this around in a circle, you'll see that I'm working on the part of the unit that's on the very inside edge of my completed circle. So here's the way I've got it laid out. Here's my working thread exiting there. I've picked up a bead and I'm sewing through the bead on the opposite end. I'm going to pull that through. I'm going to pick up another bead and I'm going to come back through the bead at the top from the other side. Just like this. So now when I pull it nice and slow, pull everything all together, get it off my hand here, I will have my first little unit. So now when I pull this thread through, you'll see that one bead situates on each side, just like this. And I have my four beads in place at the bottom of this cube. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to reinforce that just a little bit because I want it to be all pulled together nice and tight. So I'm just going to go through all four beads again of that bottom right angle weave unit. And I showed you guys this trick in a separate video. I'll try to find the links for that and put all the links in the information above. All right, so now I'm coming back through the bottom bead one more time. Okay, so now I need to work on, on the next bead I'm going to connect. So I'm going to move up this bead here on the side. Here's my four little beads right there that I'm working with. I already did this bottom one. I'm going to move up the bead on the left. Now we could kind of turn this work around a little bit. One thing I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and um, do some of this tail thread. All right, so... Now I've got three beads here for this next unit. I've got this bead, this bead, and the bead over here. So I just need to pick up one. You can kind of bring it around so you can see what you're doing. So I'm going to come down this bead where my tail thread is exiting on the other side. You can see that'll pull it in together, but now you can see I have my little four bead unit. One, two, three, four. So I'm coming down that side bead. I need to come back across this bead here at the bottom. And it'll pull it a little more tightly for us. I need to come back up the bead on this side. Make sure I'm getting the right bead. Which is this bead right here. And as I pull this, I'm going to pull nice and tight and pull all of those beads in this unit really together. I'm going to come back around and reinforce those four beads again. Coming through the two, the top and the right side. I'm going to come through that bottom bead. Right here. And then I just need to go back up the side bead one more time. Right there. So now I'm coming up this bead on the left-hand side right here. I need to roll it over and come across the bead at the top of the unit. And make sure I get the right bead. Which is this bead right here. Now I'm going to be sewing my unit between this bead and the bead on this side over here. 
Let me see if I can get my light just a little bit better. So I need to pick up one bead. I'm, I'm going to turn it just this way so you can see a little bit better. So here's my working thread exiting to the right of the top bead. I've picked up my C bead and I'm coming through the bead at the bottom from right to left. I'm going to pull that through and pull it nice and snug. Notice that we already have the bead to the left side in place from where we added the top bead on the unit on the side. So all we have to do is pass up through that bead from the bottom to the top, come back across our bead at the top from left to right. And we're going to go back through those beads one more time so we'll come back down to the bead we picked up and added on the right side. I'm going to come down, come back across from right to left through that bottom bead. And I'm pulling pretty snug each time now. We're going to come back up the side bead here on the left. And once again, we'll come across this bead at the top. Get my needle poked through. And we've reinforced all the way around and we're right back where we started from. Now we're going to move down into the bead on the right hand side and we're going to turn our work over to the side and as you can see that bead has become the top bead of this unit on this side. Now all we really need to do is sew through all four of those beads and come back out the bead at the top to close up this side of the beadwork and connect all of our beads together. So I'll come down the bead on the left I will come across the bead at the bottom from left to right my needle's getting pretty bent I will come up the bead on the right And then I will come back through the bead at the top from right to left. And now we have officially uh, created that 15, 15th unit and our little circular shape is completely formed. And we can now move into position to embellish. Now to get into position, we're just going to sew back across this bead in the center. We're exiting down here, this bead to the left. We're going to sew across the bead to the other side. And now we're positioned in the center of our little circle. So now we're ready to begin our embellishments. The working thread is exiting here to the left from the bottom bead. You want to make sure that you can clearly see each unit along this outside edge of the beadwork. I'm going to pick up my 110 rose gold. I'm going to sew through the bead above it from right to left. Then I'm going to come back down through that rose gold bead. And I'm going to come back through the bead at the bottom that I started from, from right to left. And that situates our rose gold bead with the whole orientation going in this direction around the beadwork. Next, we want to come down the bead on the left. Here's our working thread exiting this bead up here to the left. We're going to come down that bead. And we're going to come from left to right through the bead, the next bead, like that. We're going to pick up our rose gold bead. Now we're exiting to the right of this bead. So we'll come through the bead above it from the left to the right. We 
we're going to come back through the bead. And we're going to come back through the bead at the bottom from left to right. And that's all we're going to do till we've sewn all the way around the outside perimeter of this of our circle. So now my thread is exiting to the right, so I'm going to come down the bead on the right. And I'm coming down the bead on the right. Make sure your working thread doesn't hang up on your rose gold beads. Now I need to come through the bead at the bottom from right to left. And then the steps are the same for this bead as they were for the bead above the very first one. Because we're doing our figure eights, remember that we'll start from the, uh, the, the working thread will alternate between sides of the, uh, between both sides of our circle. And once you've gotten your last bead added, you'll be coming through your little 11 0 here at the bottom. All you need to do is step up into your first rose gold, just like that. And there's what we have so far. So now we're ready to add our embellishment beads to the uh, to the circle portion of our uh, three-dimensional toggle clasp. I'm going to be using these um, Jet Bronze three millimeter droop beads that are um, check glass. And they match really well with my Jet Iris Brown fire polish that I used in the bracelet. They're not an exact match, but I don't think there's enough difference that you will really even notice. So what we're going to do is we're exiting from the 11 rose gold bead that we added in the last round. We're going to pick up the Druk and sew through the next one. And we're just going to repeat that all the way around the beadwork. Picking up a round bead and sewing through the next 11 accent bead. And once we get all the way back around, as you sew through that lat, adding your, add your last round bead, sew through this uh, rose gold 11 and then sew up into this first bead. So here I am adding my last jerk bead. I'm sewing through the rose gold seed bead, and I'm also stepping up into the very first round bead that I added in this round. And this is what we have. So this next part is optional, and I've already went ahead and put a couple on just to see if I like the look, and I do. So just you would start just the same, even though I'm starting here. You would start where you were exiting from that um, three millimeter bead. You're going to pick up one of your 11 0 rose gold and just sew through the next three millimeter. And we're going to repeat that all the way around. If you don't want to do that, just you can just sit, sit exiting from that drug bead and wait for us, and we'll be right back. So I've sewn through and added my last um, round of my 11 0s. I'm exiting from this drug bead. I'm going to sew through the next 11 0, 3 millimeter 11 0. And I want to be exiting that 11 0. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how to attach this end to your bracelet. So now I'm ready to connect my toggle to my bracelet. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this 11 C bead that I'm exiting, I'm exiting it to the left. I'm also going to use this 11 C bead here. I will be using this druk, this druk, these two ados on the base, and these two ados on the base. So now I'm exiting from this bead to the left. I'm going to sew down through this bead right here on my little eight, um, eight oh rose gold beads. Then I'm going to work my way around this unit. So I'm going to come across the bottom. Up the top. I mean up the left side. I'm going to come across the top. Then I'm going to go through that three millimeter drug bead and back through that same 11 that I was exiting. Then I'm going to pull it all into the beadwork, just like that, nice and snug. Now I'm going to come back down through the 8 again, and I'm going to sew through that same thread path 
at least twice because this is where your bracelet's going to get the most wear and tear. So I'm sewing through the four eight-o's. And as I sew through that last eight-o at the top, I'm going to come back through the three millimeter and the 11 o Just like that. Now I want to get over here and I want to do the same thing on this side. Go ahead and reinforce that circle of beads one more time. Now that I've completed that connection and I've reinforced it the last time, I should be exiting from I should have been exiting that 11 o C bead. I'm going to sew through the three millimeter and the next 11 o on the outside edge of that toggle clasp. And we need to go ahead and sew through that next three millimeter. Now we're going to do the same thing on this side, but we're sewing in the opposite direction. So that is why we want to exit that three millimeter. Now we're going to come through the bead at the top. Down the bead on the right side. Across the bead at the bottom, making sure not to loop our thread or catch the loop of our thread with our needle. We're going to come up the bead on the left hand side. Now we're going to come through the 11 0 and the dark bead. You're going to pull everything nice and secure, and then you're just going to reinforce by following that same exact thread path at least a couple of more times. So we'll go across the bead at the top, down the bead on the right side, across our bottom bead, up the bead on the left side, and again through the 11 0 and the four mil or the three millimeter right there. So follow that thread path and add one more reinforcement through on this end of your bracelet. So now what we're going to do is end this thread. So I just went under the closest thread bridge, made a small loop, pulled my knot in. Move through the next bead. I'm going to work my way down to this first right angle weave unit of fire polish to tie a few more knots. I don't want to tie knots in between these C beads. So as I come across this bead one more time here at the bottom, I'm going to take my needle and go under this set of thread bridges here, make a loop, pass my needle through the loop and pull that knot down between the 8 and the fire polish. Come through the fire polish, the next 8 going to do the same thing here. I'm going to go under the threads between that 8 and that fire polish. Grab my loop, pull my knot, pass through. And I'm going to continue on until I feel like my working thread is secured and I've done at least four or five knots. Move away from that final knot by passing through at least one more bead and then end the thread. Then we'll come back and we'll talk about how to create the other end of our clasp. Now we're ready, and now we're ready to um, go ahead and make the bar end of our toggle clasp. And I'm going to use this one as an example. Here is my one, my current one. I'm going to take this one and just bring it up through, and you're going to see that it sits perfectly on this circle. This particular one is six cubes long. And we're getting really good at doing our little cubic right angle weave. So basically all you need to do is create a strip of cubic right angle weave that is six cubes long. For my bracelet, I am going to be using all black. For your bracelet, you may want to use um, the rose gold if you like the look of so much more, uh, that much more rose gold going on. I think in this example that the black bar is going to be perfect. I think I have plenty of the rose gold going on inside of this bracelet. And I am going to just go ahead and uh, use solid black for mine. So I'm 
my I was having a little bit of trouble with my focus and I got this new phone so just so you guys know I accidentally had it set out on a bigger landscape and I didn't mean to do that all right so basically we're just doing the exact same thing we did at the beginning of the um, portion for the round piece we're going to begin with one cube we're going to add uh, five more additional cubes and like I said, if you need help with this, head over there to um, Cubic Right Angle Weave Method 2 here on my YouTube channel or over on my blog if you prefer step-by-step -step photographs. And um, get your little bar made. Meet me back here and I'll show you guys um, one little embellishment step that we're going to take. We're going to take some uh, Jet Opaque 15 O's just to fill in between the beads of the finished bar. All right, so I have just finished my six cube, and I sewed through all four of my beads at the top, just like we normally would, and we are exiting from the last bead. Now what we're going to do is we are going, I, I decided I gave it a little bit of thought, and I think I'm going to go ahead and just use 11 O's for this next part, because I have a pretty big gap in between these beads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to Exiting to the left of this top bead, I'm going to pick up my 11 0 and sew down through the side bead. And I'm going to pick up another 11 0. I'm going to sew down through the next side bead. What this is going to do is it is going to hide any exposed threads that we have on this bar. But it's also going to serve to stiffen up the bar really well so that it doesn't start bending and folding as you take it in and out of the toggle. So just keep picking up 11 O's and sewing down the next side bead till you reach the end of the row. And I got a few more I've got to do here. Coming down the next side bead. I'll show you how to make the turn. So now I'm sewing through the last side bead on this row. I'm going to pick up an 11 0 and I'm going to sew through the bead on this end like that. And that brings me over to the other side of this same row of cubic right angle weave. Now I'm going to sew my 11 O's down this side. So just pick up and go through the side bead and do that all the way till the end of the bar. So now I'm sewn down this side and added my beads. I've come across and sewn up this side and added my beads. Now I'm going to pick up an 11 0 and I'm going to roll the bar to the other side. I'm going to pass through the bead at the top, just like that. And now I need to sew beads down this side. So we'll just pick up our 11, sew down the beads on the side. Of each unit. Till you reach the bottom. Then we're going to sew one bead over this way and go up the last row. Once we've sewn our beads up the fourth side, our little 11 O's, we still have one more bead to add at the top. So we're going to pick up the last 11 O. It come through the bead at the top, plus the very first uh, corner bead that we added during this portion of the tutorial. The next thing we want to do is sew through all of these beads on this end and make the, all of those beads uh, connected to each other and firm everything up. Once you've done that, you'll sew down one of your sides and do the same thing on this end. See how nicely this one is shaped? I've already stitched through all of those uh, beads here. All right, so we'll just keep, um, we'll just move in the direction that we need to. And if you need to, you can sew through one bead at a time. If you can get through two, do two. Where you want to end up is coming out of one of your corner beads. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sew down to the center of this 
of this bar so that we can attach it to the other to the other end of our bracelet. If you'll notice here on our top and bottom beads here in the center, we have a total of seven. We want to go into the fourth bead there, but to get there, the first thing we need, we can either sew around our units or we can just simply sew straight down the side because we added those accent beads. And this will prevent us from having any exposed threads. Make sure you don't skip any. Uh, we're going to move through, I think, six of them. So right now I'm passing through. I was exiting the corner bead. Now I'm moving through the next three. Actually, the next four. And I'm going to go through the one more bead for a total of five. And that's going to put us into that little bead that's part of that original right angle weave cube, or the cubic right angle weave. So now we can safely pass right into this very uh, middle bead on our bar. All right, notice the position of the working thread. My working thread is exiting from the bottom of that center bead. I'm going to lay that down. I am going to pick up three 11 jet, one rose gold 11, three more 11 jet. I'm going to sew into the 8 at the top of this connecting writing weave unit here on the right. I'm going to pull all of that in. Then I'm going to move through this unit just like we did on the other end of the bracelet. So I'm going to come down the bead on the side. I'm going to come across the bead at the bottom plus this um, fire polish bead. Now I'm going to work through this unit in the center between the two sets of fire polish units. So I'm going to come down the 8 -0 across the 8 at the bottom of that unit. And we did this on the other end, so it's nothing new. Make sure your thread doesn't get hung up on your existing beadwork. Now we're going to come up through the 8 on the left, and we're going to go through the fire polish and the 8 on our other connection unit here. I'll pull all of that through. Come up this 8 on the side, on the left side, and across the one at the top. Now we're ready to pick up three more of our Jet Opaque 11 O's. So I've got those beads picked up. What I'm going to do is I am going to make sure that my little toggle didn't get flipped, and I want the thread exiting the bottom of that center bead just like it was previously. I'm going to sew up through the 11 -0 rose gold plus the three 8 -0s there that are already in position. Then I'm going to pull that thread through. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through that center bead where we started from on the bar from top to bottom just like that. So we can follow our original thread path now as we pull it through, we can really secure that bar in place. And now all we're going to do is reinforce. So we're going to come down through the three 11 O's again and the rose gold bead. This time we're really going to start securing our work. So we're going to pull nice and snug. We're going to sew down these three beads on the right and into that 8 -0 bead. And then just follow our same thread path around this unit, down to this center unit, up to this side. So now I need to come through the bead at the bottom, the fire polish, and the 8 -0 on the side of my center unit. Cross the bead at the bottom again. We are going to come up the bead on the side, plus the fire polish in the 8 here at the bottom of this unit. Pull. We are going to come up the side bead, 
Edo. And then we're going to sew up through the top bead and the three beads on the left. Once we sew up through these next four little seed beads, right here, Now we have two complete thread passes through all of our work. We're going to come down that bead on the bar in the center, again, from the top to the bottom. Now I strongly suggest that you follow that exact same thread path at least one more time and add a third round of reinforcements to our bar end of our toggle. Once you've secured your um, final reinforcement, we're going to sew down these three beads one more time, the rose gold, the three beads on this side, and through our ADO. We're going to sew back down the side bead of that unit and tie our half hitch knots using the units of the fire polish, just like we did um, when we added the circle end earlier. So go ahead and re uh, you can backtrack to that portion of the video if you need um, some help with that. I'm just going to go ahead and make sure I tie at least three or four half inch knots before I, and then move away from the last knot by passing through at least one more bead. And then after that, I'm going to um, cut my thread. So here we have our finished bracelet and I just love the way this bracelet came out. It's just totally beautiful. Our beautiful little uh, cubic right angle weave toggle clasp actually adds just the right um, touch, finishing touches to this gorgeous imp bracelet with these beautiful onyx gemstones. And our combination of fire polish and our little square stitch lace we did here on the outside edge. I mean, it really just came out pretty fabulous. Um, the toggle clasp, if you've secured it nicely, you don't have to worry about that coming off. Um, or, you know, loosening up. It looks really pretty. It fits me really well. And I'm pretty happy with the outcome of the arabesque lace onyx gemstone bracelet. All right, guys, I really hope you've liked this tutorial. It's kind of a little bit longer, but, um, you know, it goes along with my line of thinking of doing my patterns uh, uh, using vi the video format. And instead of selling it on my website, I'm offering it to my members here on YouTube. All right, folks, so thank you for everything. Thank you for your continued support. I hope you're really enjoying all of the projects that we're adding to the membership portion of um, our program. And I hope that you have a lot of fun playing around with this concept. You can actually change this up fairly easily to suit your own needs, to suit your own beads. We could have used 11 O's here instead of 8 O's and accommodated a much smaller bead here in the center. I kind of really liked the way our project looked before adding all of this part portion here as well. You can make it a lot less embellished just by doing the two rows of your units and adding your gemstones down the center you would still be able to say, add the same kind of clasp or any type of clasp that you choose using the connection uh, right angle weave units here that we put at the end of our two strips. All right, folks, I want to thank you all for everything you do, and I want you to have a great day. Thanks for watching.